What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a general overview of Apparition Net Studio, which is a new product that we've released for $25. It's basically like a all-in-one modding solution for JTAG and RGH consoles. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this video about each individual feature in the tool or each individual mod tool in the application. Um, though I'll have separate videos coming out in the next few days on kind of each feature and you know each application and I'll have videos on that that will go more in depth and actually show you them working and what they can do. This is more of just a quick overview so you get a general idea of what um, what's in Apparition Net. So let's go ahead and launch the application. So I'm not going to be able to show you like the actual tools working. I'll be having, like I say, th that's what those separate videos will be. This is more of just a general overview to show you what's uh, in the app. So, okay, so when you open the tool, um, you'll need to sign in. But if you click the remember password option, then you can go ahead and sign in by clicking this option in the top right. So once we're signed in here, you've got access to all your COD tools. So there's a mod tool for every Call of Duty game. There's a mod tool for every Halo game. Um, you've got mod tools for CSGO, Left 4 Dead series, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Forza, a bunch of Indian arcade games, and then you've got your console tools here as well. So I suppose we'll start off with the console manager. So the console manager basically allows you to manage your console in the same way that Neighborhood does. You can add your Xbox 360, um, you can go ahead and reboot, take screenshots, make the console default, remove console, grab console info, um, console functions as well all that good stuff. Like I say, I'll have detailed videos on all this stuff coming soon if I'm going too fast for you guys on all this stuff. I'll have separate videos going in detail on the console manager and the file manager and all the other stuff in the tool. So you've got that. You can double click to open in file manager and you've got access to your file system of your Xbox, basically the same way as Neighborhood. We tried to make it look as close to Neighborhood as possible. Well, kind of, you know, the same general layout as Neighborhood so that it'll be familiar, but it's a lot faster. If you want to access, say, um, Modern Warfare 3, normally it takes a long time to load game directories, but not with the file manager. Pretty damn fast. You can double click XEX files and launch them just like Neighborhood. You can also add the XEX files to Quick Launcher, which will allow you to launch them from a list so that the next time you want to launch um, a game, you don't have to go back into that directory and find the default.xex. You can just open the Quick Launcher um, and launch them. If I just show you that right there, open the Quick Launcher, click the game you want, and it will launch it straight away, and you don't have to um, manually find the XEX file to launch it again. So you can also access the file manager from here as well if you don't want to go uh, into the console manager to access it. So that is basically the file manager. There's also built-in features designed for JTAGs and RGHs that Neighborhood doesn't have, like the launch.ini editor. So you can double-click, open the launch.ini uh, with our dash launch configurator, which will let you edit all the dash launch settings, including the plugin list and the button launches as well. And there's other features in there as well, which I'll be going on to more detail on in future videos on the file manager. As you can also see stuff up here like copy and pasting files, deleting directories, creating directories, importing files um, from the computer to the console and exporting files from the console to the computer, as well as deleting files and all that good stuff. So I'll have more detailed videos on that soon. Okay, so that's the file manager. Then you've got the module debugger. This basically allows you to inject XEX files and load them on the console without having to reboot the console or adding them as a dash launch plugin. This is particularly good if you're like say a developer developing a mod menu and you keep creating a new XEX file and you have to keep loading it on the console. You don't have to keep adding it as a plugin and rebooting it each time. You can also double click the XEX files and dump them to the computer as well. Then you've got the update studio. This is basically designed to update XEX files instead of having to use XEX tool for that. So normally if you were wanting to update a default.xex file for say Advanced Warfare, say you want Advanced Warfare on TU-17, normally you would have to, I suppose the quickest way of your online would be to uh, go on the game, get the update from Xbox Live, then extract the default.xex file um, from the game directory, then extract the default.xexp file from the active title uh, partition running on the, on the console. And then you'd have to 
download XCX tool and load them into XCX tool to patch the default.xcx with the latest title update. Well, Update Studio allows does this all for you. So you just go on the game, get the update from Xbox Live, or if you're offline, you can get the update from Aurora, hop on the Update Studio, select the default.xcx, and it will update it for you. So this won't work right now because I'm in the dash. Uh, I'm in the dashboard. I need to be on a game for it to work, but it should give me the list of all the XCX files running on the dashboard. So when you're in a game, you'll only have, say, the default.xcx and the default mp.xcx. You just select the XCX you want to update, and then you just select, say, um, next, and it'll ask you where you want to store that on your computer, and you just store it, and it will go ahead and it will patch it for you with the latest title update and then output that to your computer so you have the latest patched default.xcx file without having to download the xcxp file and patch it manually with xcx tool so it just does that all for you okay so that's that then you've got the network sniffer so this is our uh, advanced ip pooler so it doesn't just work on the cod games it also works on halo 3 halo reach and halo 4 as well and Essentially, it allows you to get the IP addresses of anyone in your game. You just click Get Clients when you're in a game with um, other players, and it will list them all in this box. You just select which one you want, and it will grab their IP addresses. But the way that it's more advanced is not just that it works on Halo, but it also grabs more information. It doesn't just grab your external IP address or the external IP address of other people. It also grabs their local IP address, their online port, their XUID, the machine ID of their console and their Mac address as well. You can also double click a specific uh, player in your game as well, which will do a who is lookup on them and give you additional information like the town or city that the IP is located in, longitude, latitude, coordinates, etc. So you've got that. Uh, then you've got your KV checker so you can check KVs on your computer to see if they're banned or not. You can check folders that are on your computer to see if they're banned or not. You can also generate a log file that will give you information like the console IDs, serial numbers, and whether it's banned or not. Uh, so there's that. Then there's the settings, basic settings. You can change your password. Um, you can change the theme as well. Various things like that. Uh, enable or disable auto login. So that's basically the console tools quick overview of that. Then you've got the Call of Duty tool, so I'll just open one for a quick example. So each Call of Duty tool is different, um, but they're, they'll all have the same general, like, well, they'll have the same general options, but they will be slightly different. So certain COD tools will have more features than others, etc. And there's still work to be done on these. We're still going to be adding stuff to updates, uh, adding stuff in updates for them. So the idea behind uh, these tools is that you can minimize the launcher once you open one of these tools you'll still have access to everything you've got access to the network sniffer you've got access to the console manager and therefore the file manager as well so you can take screenshots you can access the quick launcher to quickly launch another game and then you've got your basic options so you've got your recovery stats right here you can import export stat files you've got more stat options your class editor so you can edit custom class names and your clan tag You've got customized gear on Advanced Warfare, it lets you select different helmets, knee guards, you know, just lets you scroll through all the different um, kind of clothing options for your character and then you can save them to a file if you find something that you particularly like. So you can load that up again at any point. Uh, then you've got your client modifications, so you can load all the players in your game. Again, I'm not in a game right now, so nobody's going to show up. But you would go into a game, you can also double click a specific player and edit their gamer tag or get multicolored gamer tags, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can send specific mods here to specific clients that you select, as well as kick player, etc., teleportation, all that good stuff. Then you've got cheat packages, which allows you to add a bunch of um, DVARs to a list and load them up at any point. Again, I'll go into more detail on that on my separate video on the uh, co uh, Call of Duty tools. So then you've got console commands, so you've got your game send server command, middle text, console command, kill feed text, and say text you can send to specific clients too. And then there's the global game vari variable, so these will affect every player in the game when you're host. So you've got your jump height, gravity, knockback, player speed, and time scale. Then you've got uh, identity, so this is uh, of course an XUID spoofer. It's also a gamer tag changer as well. So you can change your, just the gamer tag or spoof the whole of the whole XUID to another player. 
Then you've got your off host modifications. So all the mods you can do when you're not the host, including end game off host as well, which we have in pretty much every COD game. If we don't have it in every COD game, we will have it in an update. I think we might not have it in Black Ops 3, but we'll add it in an update if so. So then you've got host modifications. So you've got time scale. Um, you've got your score, experience, map, change map name, etc. And then force host and of course the ban bypasses. Now these ban bypasses, I probably have a separate video on those as well. Uh, these ban bypasses are literally as good as XBL ninjas and tampered. So we have a bypass for uh, Black Ops 2, Ghosts, Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3. And they are as good as ninja and tampered lives bypasses. And they, they do not require an XEX, an extra, bleh, can't speak. They do not require an extra XEX file. Um, they're all done just through RTE connection. So obviously because it's an RTE tool, um, you, it doesn't automatically enable. So you are going to have to uh, be signed out when you go on the game and then activate the bypass, then sign in. Um, but then you'll have the bypass. And like I say, they are really good bypasses. So we've got that. Uh, so that's basically the COD tools. Just as an example, I'll open another one so you can see it's very similar. You've got your Client modifications, you've got all your options up here, you've got your recovery stats, class name editor, cheat packages, global game variables, even zombie modes because Black Ops 3 has a zombie mode, and off host modifications, host modifications, etc. Ban bypass, so all sort of similar stuff. Uh, then you've got the Halo tools. So with Halo, we've got similar things, same stuff along the top. You've got your player settings, your quick mods. Uh, vehicle settings, you've got aimbot there, you've got different lobby options, you've got your XUID spoofer, all that good stuff. Same idea with the other tools like Halo 4 and Halo 3. So you've got all that along there, you've got your player settings, your quick mods, you've got your vehicle settings, aimbot, and of course game options and XUID spoofer. And then we've got, so arcade and indie games, I'm not going to go over, they're just small tools for a bunch of indie and arcade games. Then you've got your Left 4 Dead tool, so you've got different modifications for Left 4 Dead, RTE. You've got controller bindings, this allows you to actually um, bind a specific mod or specific CVAR to any button on the controller. So I can select the A button, bind say no clip to A and apply it, and then whenever I press A uh, it will enable, it will toggle no clip. Same idea with the different buttons. You can just select any button you want and bind different CVARs to those buttons. When you've found a layout that you might want to keep, you can then give it a name, save it to a file, so you can load that at any other point that you go on the game. There's also preset binds as well. So there's a preset binds for a forge mode, an equipment spawner, a cheat mode, and default binds as well. You can also click the question mark, which will give you details about what each button does up for that specific preset. And then you've got the same thing for Left 4 Dead 2 as well. So you've got your controller bindings, your modifications, more modifications. Then CSGO. Okay, so we've got stats for CSGO. Dedicated server mods. So these mods will work in public matches. So you can change your name in a public match. You can send text uh, to everybody in the game in a public match. Wall hack, which is basically like um, kind of like draw bodies and wall hack. Uh, you've got text spammer, third person. Uh, FPS counter, uh, no spread and no recoil. And then you've got local hosted mods. So these these ones will only work if you're in a private match or if you're playing against bots or something like that. Um, so you've got CVARs, dev developer boxes, delete models and players at, at your crosshairs. You can toggle God mode. You've got your unlimited ammo, no clip, give weapons and uh, teleport all. And then you've got Battlefield 3. So the Battlefield stuff is public cheater stuff that you can do. In online games, so you've got wall hack, uh, ESP, uh, one hit kill, etc. You've got kind of similar options for Battlefield 4 as well. And then you've got a Forza Horizon credit editor and a Forza Horizon 2 credit editor. So that is the basic overview of Apparition Net Studio. I didn't go into too much detail on each thing because, I mean, we are already. Wow, I mean, how, how the hell has it taken that long? Okay. I only wanted this video to be about 10 minutes long, but it's gone well over that. So I will have more specific videos on each thing. I'll have a separate video on the Call of Duty tools, which will probably just I'll select one of the Call of Duty tools and just do a video showing you guys everything uh, working on there. And then I'll do the same for Halo 
and I'll have a separate video on the other console tools going into more detail on those and I'll have a separate video on the file manager I'll have a separate video maybe on the Left 4 Dead or CSGO tools and maybe Battlefield I'm not, I'm not sure but yeah there's lots more videos basically on Apparition Net Studio coming soon if you'd like to purchase it the link is in the description it's $25 right now um, the price may go up in the future we're not sure but as of when I'm making this video the price is $25 so link is in the description to where you can buy that. I'll also put a link to the Apparition Net Studio website there in the description as well. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this video or you found the information useful, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. Shuffling